Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. NFL, as we start on a Monday, as we usually do. Strange week. A lot of, uh, we had three shutouts. A lot of teams struggled on offense to do anything. And we only had one, quote, upset as the Bears were three-point dogs and beat the Panthers with three first downs and four completions out of Trubisky. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, a big day for the favorites uh, on Sunday. My numbers showed the chalk at 8, 2, and 2 ATS, or 8 and 2 with a couple of pushes. I didn't count the Chargers Broncos because it was a switch of favorites uh, during the week. Uh, the Bills Bucks, the Dolphins Jets, they were both legit pushes uh, at plus 3 slash minus 3. But you're right about the offensive futility yesterday. I mean, seven teams didn't score an offensive touchdown. Broncos, Bears, Browns, Cardinals, Colts, Panthers, Titans. And let's not forget, it was worse than that. The Ravens barely snuck one in. That was the last play of the game down two scores. We'll talk about that score in a minute. The Giants barely snuck one in. They had an 18-yard drive off a turnover. The 49ers, a late, meaningless touchdown. They've been uh, held out of the end zone uh, for the first three and a half quarters. Not to mention the Sunday night, I don't know, it wasn't a very exciting game. Uh, The Sunday night disappointment. The Falcons, of course, who were two getting shut out until their final possession. So it easily could have been 11 of the 30 teams in action on Sunday not scoring an off at the touchdown. And yet, even with all of that, Polly, was not a huge day for underbetters. Underbetters went eight and five, which is good, but not ridiculous considering all those uh, dismal offensive showings because a couple of tough beats if you had unders. The Steelers and the Vikings both snuck over the total late. Murray had 113 yards rushing. Baltimore can't stop the run. Third worst in the league, which is a big surprise. The total was 37 and a half for 38. Baltimore had done nothing the whole game. Wallace went out with an injury, and a lot of it was check down stuff. But on fourth and 11 from the 13, and on the final play of the game, the Ravens throw a touchdown pass. Flacco to Moore puts it over the total. That one was tough. This one was kind of kind of tough, not that bad. But the Jets plus three. Cutler goes out, which got the re- rejuvenated the offense as Moore came in, who was thir- he's better than Cutler anyway, so who, who doesn't know that except Gase? He was 13 of 21 for 188 and two touchdowns, and McCown with a horrible interception with 40 seconds left. Dolphins win by three. See, everyone comes in and ex- says, oh, the backup's better than the starter as soon as he comes in and plays well. And then what happens is you see uh, performances like you saw this past week. From some of the backup QBs. Oh, yeah, he came in and played well for a half off the bench. I went to the playoffs last year. Uh, I, I mean, you told me what an impact Moore. player, Adrian. You, Pauly, you specifically called me out on the show last week. Talk about what a difference maker Adrian Peterson was for Arizona. What did Adrian Peterson do yesterday? Nothing. <laughs> okay, but Jets is a bad beat push. You got plus three. You're up two touchdowns with 12 minutes left. Look at the tweet from Seth Walder which is one of the reasons why I don't agree with the ESPN analytics. But nonetheless, at one point uh, at the start of the fourth quarter, the Jets had a 95 and a half percent chance to win today. They ended up losing. That's a pretty tough beat. Look at the other tweet, NFL research. The Dolphins have now won 12 consecutive one possession games decided by eight points or fewer dating back to last season. The all time NFL record is 14. So while we rip Adam Gase, Adam Gase is doing something right. Miami's won every single one of these tight contests in back-to-back weeks. They rallied back from huge deficits to win the game in straight-up fashion. There was some uh, strange money coming in on the markets on Sunday morning, which I I didn't understand. Uh, A lot of bad bets. Broncos, this one I understood because there's no no such thing as a home game for the Chargers. And it was all Denver fans there. But in any event, Broncos went from the dog to the favorite as high as two and a half. Late money pushed it down to one. They were shut out for the first time since 1992. Simeon had 128 passing yards with five minutes left. Giants money, you figure it out. From eight down to four, Seattle wins there, 24 to seven. They bet on Hundley. I mean, this I don't know. You can't put a price on a number on what Rodgers is worth. Hundley had 80 yards passing. Horrible. He looks for his first read. If he's not there, he takes off and runs. Packers from five and a half down to three and a half. They lost by nine. You saw some late money on the Ravens, some weird moves late in the markets. Yeah, and, and certainly some stuff as a better you need to be aware of. Denver took all that money, and I honestly don't know how the Broncos can trot uh, Trevor Simeon back out there again next week. 
he was that bad and after getting beaten down by the Giants at home the way they lost in L.A. to the Chargers yesterday. Non-competitive effort and a team that did not take a punch. Well, same thing like the Giants. I mean, that Giants money was baffling to me. The Packers money was baffling to me. The Falcons money was baffling to me. So when you get these concepts of, oh, I don't want to fade the wine. Oh, I don't want to fade the money. I want to fade the shirt. You know, don't sweat it. <laughs> They're not going to win every single wager. We'll talk about that, obviously, with pros and Joes in just a moment. Not a great week for the sharp betters. And uh, bad for the books. Bears, Panthers under 41 and a half down to 39 in some spots. In Tennessee, Cleveland under 46 down to 42 and a half. Bears again went 17 to three, three first downs. They had 150 yards and Trubisky completed four passes. And Tennessee wins 12 to nine in overtime. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, let's look at the two tweets here uh, about the Bears game, because that's fun to talk about. Uh, the one from ESPN Stats and Info, Eddie Jackson, the first player to return both a fumble and an interception uh, for touchdowns in the same game since Antonio Cromartie. There's a blast from the past in 2007, week eight. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, and of course, the Bears, the first team to win a game with seven or fewer pass attempts and Five or fewer first downs since the Browns did so on December 3rd, 1950 against the Eagles. As for Cleveland, Tennessee, yeah, that was a real bad result uh, for the house. A game with zero touchdowns. Pros versus Joes. Pros took it, on, took it on the chin for the first time. And I'll just I'll tell you how bad of a week it was in the Super Contest, the number one contest in the world at the Westgate, $1,500 to get in five picks a week against the spread in the NFL. One and 10 against the spread, the top picks. Consensus, 0 and 5. And you saw pro money on the Bengals, Giants, Broncos, and Falcons. They didn't get the Vikings right, although there was late Ravens money. Yeah, and, and for the Joes, it wasn't like the Joes had themselves a great day either. The Joes went 1 and 2. And for the season, I mean, the pros still uh, putting together a real nice season. If you've been betting the Joe, recommendations or the Joe selections every week. Uh, if you're not broke yet, uh, you will be soon. The winning weeks have been few and far between for Joe's so far this NFL season. Hey guys, for the full video, go to sbrpicks.com. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now, not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now, the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.